for a young fashion designer today, I think the most important thing for them to understand is the connection between music and fashion. Thank you so much. It's going to be very hard, very difficult for you to become a top fashion designer and get the space you want to get if you cannot connect your creativity with a musical artist. It's just not going to happen. Study the connection and you'll understand exactly what I mean. To give you an example, when I started out, I started out with the rappers. When Virgil started out, he started out with the rappers. That's the way the game is going to go. You know, you need the influencers. You know, the rappers are the influencers. So we are the create, the, the designers are the creativity. The artists are the influencers. You've got to have that combination. You know, and the sad thing about what's happening to y'all is like, y'all can't get influences. The best, in, the best artists, man, the best creative artists in fashion can't get influences because the big brands scoop them up before you have even an opportunity to work with them. You need somebody to showcase your creativity. You grew up in DC, right? That's it. in the world to be a global music, right? In most cases, creative people in the fashion industry don't have the artists. But DC had the artists but didn't have the creative people. And they couldn't they could never launch it. EU took it as far as he could. Rare essence kept it going on. I just got to do I was just talking to them yesterday. Oh wow. Yeah, talking to them yesterday over. But anyway, it's that combination, you gotta pay attention to that combination. The combination of music and fashion. Man. And, and DC is a big blessing, man. Uh, are you familiar with uh I used to go down there and see Larry and Ed uh, uh and we are one, you familiar with we are one? Yes, sir, yeah. yeah and uh this connection, Larry and Ed, they was big down there. But so when you from, if you from DC and you into fashion and into the music, the first great thing you're supposed to know when you meet a guy like me from somewhere else is you should be able to sit and talk all about the development of music in DC and fashion in DC. So that DC was like. It's amazing that it never took off. One of the jokes about, one of the hard things about making it in D.C. D.C. called guys from New York Bammers. Yeah. Still yeah, call them that. Still call them. They call us Bammers, you know? Because you gotta know, now what's this? They call us Bammers. Now watch me break this down for you, right? D.C. called us Bammers because we still got that deep African thread in us. So I said, well, why D.C. calling us Bama? But when you look at the history of D.C., it's the first big, powerful black community. So when I was down in D.C., lunch hour, I'm down there checking, everybody got on blue, gray, black. If you ain't wearing blue or gray or black, in D.C. you a Bama. You know what I'm saying? Because, and the reason that is because they adjusted to the system before the rest of the black people in the nation. So everybody in D.C. they had like middle and upper class blacks in D.C. So they had moved as far away as possible from their African roots. So they don't play that stuff like we play here in Harlem. We had everything. We had the Jamaicans. We had all of them. Now, I walk down the street in D.C. I can tell you if you're Jamaican or not, because you're going to have one of color. Right. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? But if you're originally D.C., you ain't going to play no color, because you're away from that African thing. You know what I'm saying? So first thing I did when I got in fashion, I Africanized fashion. You can't, if you don't break the mold, you understand what I'm saying? You can't change the game. You know? So I was going back and forth in D.C. That's why it took a long time for D.C to get involved in like hip hop fashion. You know what I mean? Because DC had its own thing. It was locked in. Another thing about the, I went to, they had a club in DC called the Fox Trap. The Fox Trap had, you heard of that? They had 20,000 registered members, you know? And all of them was doctors, lawyers, and professional people. You didn't know somebody like that. 
Prince George County, right? So I'm doing all the study to find out why black folks in D.C. are the way they is. Prince George County is the richest black county in America. Yeah, do your statistics. So when I go, when I hit the city, I'm gonna know all the, the whole history of everything that took place in that black city from a black perspective. You know what I'm saying? I'm saying when I get there, I'm gonna get, that's what I'm saying. Rare essence, EU. You know what I'm saying? I went to all the clubs, talked to everybody in the street, walked the street, everything, so I can embrace the culture. That's what you gotta do. That's why you hear me say, look, I don't dictate fashion. I translate culture. So if I step into DC, I gotta see how y'all do. Yeah, I'm Bama. All right, I'm Bama. I go for the Bama, but let me tell you why you call me a Bama. What's different about me and about you? You know what I'm saying? Right. And the, the golden rule in fashion is there is no right or wrong in fashion. There's a weak or strong. You think what I'm saying? Strong power. What's strong? The ones who control the industry in music and fashion. They determine who gonna get the deal. Who gonna get the? Who gonna be the next person to push it? the brand? You represent the brand. Yeah, that's